Here is a brief explanation that will help you with all the visions in the book of Revelation. Many people wrongly read the book of Revelation as if it were a document concerned with the future. It's not. Others, more educated and sound, read Revelation as if it were a fictional work, full of theological allegories and symbols. It's not that either. Instead, Revelation is a compilation of visions experienced by a first century Jesus group astral prophet named John. His visions amount to an ancient astronomic report, stressing the need to resist deception and trust that the God of Israel is in charge of everything. Some people think that Revelation is best understood according to what they see on the nightly news. They are wrong. Others think the best place to teach the book of Revelation is at Mass, because they think it's all about the Eucharistic liturgy. They are also wrong. In contrast, the best place to teach the book of Revelation would be a planetarium, calibrated to stellar precision of the first century Eastern Mediterranean night sky. You'll never understand the book of Revelation or its author without capturing a first century sense of the sky. By the first century, Hellenist authors like John the Seer, and his compiler recognized that the earth was a sphere, but they imagined it stationary, the center of the universe. Encapsulating the central earth, they believed, were a series of vaulted skies that were composed either of metallic mirror or crystal. This sky vault firmament separated two regions, the one for creatures below and the other one of God and his fancy entourage above. Ancient people believed the sky was populated by living other than human persons. Henotheistic Israel was no different in this regard. These super earthly sky persons moved about the surfaces of the sky vaults wielding great influence on the earth and seas below so our ancestors in the faith believed. Inasmuch as they formed fixed constellational patterns, we might say that these stars were thought to be fixed to the sky vaults. The burning fiery stars were seen as eyes, according to ancient Mediterranean beliefs about light and eyesight. So these sky creatures must have many eyes. Wandering stars called planets, including the sun and the moon, moved across the sky vaults and through the many-eyed constellations. There were seven visible wandering stars or planets, and our weekdays bear their Roman and Norse names. The day of the sun, Sunday, is followed by the day of the moon, Moon Day, or Monday, or Lunes in Spanish. The day of the war god Tyre or Tiwa or Mars like Martes comes next. After his day comes the swift Mercury's day, Miércoles, or the day of Wotan or Odin who was believed to ride the swift eight-legged horse. Then comes the thunder god's day, whether it be Jupiter, Weves or Thor's day, followed by the day of Venus, Viernes, or Freya, Friday. Venus and Freya were goddesses of male arousal. Last comes Saturn's day, the day of the god of lead and time. These planets are the visible wandering stars of light, but ancients knew two other planets, invisible gloomy sky beings shrouded in shadow. They were believed to be darkness personified. Ancient India knew the dark pair as Rahu and Ketu, 
but Hellenists like Dorotheus of Sidon and Tertullian called the shadow planets Anabibazon and Katabibazon. John the Seer, whose visions make up the book of Revelation, called them Gog and Magog. These dark planets moved about the southeastern Mediterranean sky, a region ostensibly lacking stars and renowned for endless meteor showers, believed by ancient Israel to be the location of the cosmic abyss. Sometimes erratic, ephemeral sky beings fell to the earth in disgrace. These were the shooting stars or falling stars, called cometes or hairy stars. Ancient people invariably understood comets to be bad omens. The four horsemen in the book of Revelation are really comets. So also are all the bowls. and trumpets bringing woes to the earth in John's visions. Ancient Mediterraneans believed that these sky beings enjoyed tremendous influence when they sat enthroned in the sky over certain lands and peoples. All Mediterraneans knew the reality of sunburn being burned by the other than human person called sun. That was real. Likewise, none could doubt that some people became moonstruck or lunatics. Just as the sky beings called sun and moon were responsible for these effects and maladies, so also ancient Mediterraneans believed sky beings authored other things like skin pigmentation, the potency of the venom in a snake bite, earthquakes, the changing tides, bad weather patterns, Israelites were no different in this belief. According to Israelite tradition, unlike the earth, the sky vaults above never suffered from the flood. So while wondrous antediluvian earthly beasts like chimeras, dragons, multi-headed creatures, demigods, giants, and the like were wiped out by the deluge, their counterparts in the sky vaults endured. Hence, in the sky vaults, we see celestial dragons, monsters, colossal pregnant sky women dwarfing both moon and sun, and centaurs with scorpion tails. Folks, if you know your constellations, you have a head start in understanding apocalypse. Chief among all constellations, most honored by the highest Mediterranean god, was the cosmic ram, the lamb of God, who is destined to recalibrate the original positions of all constellations in the sky vault in the fullness of time. John the seer encounters this being right off the bat in his visions. We know this constellation as Aries, the ram. In the Semitic tradition, he was called Teleh, the kid, or male lamb, or son of man constellation. To us, sheep are cuddly, or innocent, or weak, or stupid, or all of the above. But to ancient Mediterraneans, like our biblical ancestors in the faith, sheep were symbols of hyper-ethnomasculinity. Hence, ancient Israelites, like John the seer, and the author of the fourth gospel identified this humanoid constellation, Aries, with the celestial son of man, the avenger of God. This sky being is featured in documents attributed to earlier Israelite astral prophets, such as Daniel and Enoch. The Apocalypse of John features a cast of thousands of sky beings. John sees 24 elder stars enthroned along the celestial equator, each dominating one hour of the day or night and all that happens therein. Theologians sometimes like to think that these 24 figures are the 12 apostles and the 12 sons of Jacob Israel, but they are not. They're not even human. 
They are superhuman sky beings, stars along the equator in the sky. In the same way, the colossal pregnant sky woman of Revelation 12 can be neither Eve nor Mary. She is older than humankind, a being from the first week of creation, and therefore older than both Israel and Church. The Greeks saw her as Dike, or Justice, and the Israelites called her Righteousness. She is the mother of the cosmic Lamb of God, or the Sky Vault Son of Man, according to John's forgotten sky lore predating Christology. This context was all lost in 2nd and 3rd century Jesus group recontextualizations of the Book of Revelation. Please don't forget about the colors in Apocalypse. They matter, indicating to readers what region of the Mediterranean sky John is reporting. Black, as in the Black Sea, means the northern Mediterranean sky. Red, like the land of Edom and the Red Sea, means the southern Mediterranean sky. Brilliant colors like white and emerald green and opal blue mean the eastern Mediterranean sky. Dull white means the western Mediterranean sky. The colors of the Divine Throne are yellow, that of Jasper and Carnelian. Folks, these colors also correspond to what people experience while undergoing alternate states of consciousness. Experiencing blinding white light can be a sign of deep trance. Certainly, John the Seer fell into trance repeatedly. Communicating with brilliant spirits, he interpreted them to be sky beings because of his culturally informed brain. As with the Bible, so also with the book of Revelation. You can't realize what it means until you first realize what it meant. Therefore, before 666 was thought to refer to Emperor Nero, or to Damien Thorne in the Omen films, it was first the constellation del Totan. Prior to the pregnant sky woman of Titanic proportions being seen as Mary, or Eve, or Church, or Israel, she was first the constellation we now call Virgo. The Sky Dragon was a celestial combo of the constellations Libra and Scorpio, long before Christians conceived of Lucifer. And before the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse became the Enforcer Arn Anderson, Ole Anderson, Tully Blanchard, and the Nature Boy Ric Flair, they were comets. Folks, before allegory goes wild, and before fundamentalist stupidity reads Revelation in a futile, futurist way, we need to ask, what did it first mean? To begin to answer, we need only look upward at the sky.